Well, you know, what are you going to do? Swing and a miss there. Two strikeouts and only going here for Stadola in the circle. Sounds familiar to our first game. You know, I had Coach Shimmick on uh, on air towards it. Well, for the big rally, actually, that Chilton had. You know, we were talking, and you know, mentioned that Chilton ended up with 18 hits on the first game. They had 17 strikeouts against uh, Sanford, so it just speaks to how well the job she did. Yeah, it really does. She, it, she really pitched fabulously. And it just goes to show. I mean, hey, you have one as a team. You have one bad game, bounce back. Second one on the day, you even out. Yeah. He struck out 17 times as a team. Next game, he got 18 hits. The way I look at it is you're plus one on the day. High sky ball right under the high noon sun. Carrico settles under it out there at second base. She makes the grab. And after one half complete, it is. Now there's nothing. Misha Katz coming to bat here on W7. Back here in Michigan, bottom of the first we had Cora Nelson will get things started for the Indians. And the circle this afternoon for game number two will be number seven, Megan Hockhammer. Doing the catching duties is Addison Spindler. In the outfield, left to right. O'Connor will pitch the first game, now out and left. Burgle in center field, and Olsen in right. Nelson way out ahead of that one. One and two. Third to first on the infield for the Valders Vikings. They'll line up. Schultz at third. Hernandez out at short. Kadarabic at second, and over at first will be Zipperer. Woo, airmail. That one up there near the cameras. Didn't think about this uh, this early in the season, but it's getting that time of day where the equipment in the sun starts to heat up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
you don't feel it because it's only, you know, 48, 50 degrees and it feels comfortable. The wind's starting to swirl just a little bit. So a leadoff walk there for Cora Nelson. That one low and away. So that'll bring up the senior first baseman, Caitlin Callahan. Even Coach Schimmick commented on it in the last game. She said, yeah, Chilton was playing us pretty deep. I'm like, well, do you blame him? You hit three home runs against him. <laughs> right. You know, like, you know, and then they would, little dink and dunks, land in front. What do you do? That one off the glove. First pitch temperature, 59 degrees and sunny. Wind gusts up to 15, but uh, for the most part, pretty quiet. It was uh, pretty windy this morning, but uh, much better now. Yeah, you know, there's points in that last game where the wind was, was still, and then all of a sudden you get a big gust. Yep. That one, top of the strike zone, Callahan dropped the bat. He's headed for first. Not so fast, Caitlin. I think about a letter of the law probably was a strike. I mean, it was bottom of the shoulder pit. But that one inside fouled off by Callahan. Good job fighting that off. Three balls, two strikes, runner down at first is, or now, sorry, out at second is Nelson. Anything in the outfield probably will score her. Climbing the ladder does Hockhammer to get Callahan down on strikes. So nice bounce back there by Hockhammer after the leadoff walk to Nelson to get Callahan on strikes. That'll bring up the senior pitcher, Cora, no, or, uh, Cora Sedola. Can you, Gary, can you believe we were talking with Don about it? I mean, way back when we were here freshman year for, for Cora, mm -hmm. Cora, how timid she how was. How shy the, she was. Yep. We, how, we did an interview <laughs> with her. She was our player of the game. And she did a nice job, but you could tell she was nervous yep. about talking publicly. And, yep. <laughs> uh, you know, her game has grown. Her maturity has grown. I mean, it's, it's just she's a, she's a really special young woman. Yep. And then, well. We're going to talk a little bit about her catch she had at first base to pretty much preserve the the state championship that year right. as a freshman. Like, I remember that. Oh, uh, man, that ball, uh, I don't know. I don't know who makes that catch, honestly. I, I, mean, I would agree. That, <laughs> uh, a freshman that is 5'10 with go-go gadget arms that doesn't know any better. Right. <laughs> Inside out off the base at first. Ooh. Hit the bag on the foul. Hit the, I didn't believe it hit the orange bag. Hit the bag. orange bag. Nah, I don't know. Brian's pretty good. He, he knows his stuff. But no, it's been it's been fun to watch Kadora or uh, Kadora. <laughs> Cora uh, over the last you know four years and, and uh, just so much so much great stuff in front of her. Now also try the left side of the diamond. That one going to be in fair territory. Nelson will come home and score. So that'll bring up Casey Bouchon. I love the energy of the dugout for Mitchell Cott. Just always encouraging. They got chants, they got songs, they got everything. I mean, it's just, it's it's a really, seems like a really fun place to play. Yeah, Woody Woodpecker over there pounding <laughs> against the wall or something. <laughs> you 
you know, Kayla Telushka did a lot of that when she was here. She was always, you know, the first one off the bench cheering and yelling for the other players. Abby Garceau, Ashlyn Bennon. A lot of special kids from back then. Callie Krieger. Callie Clutch here today. I haven't seen her. I saw her this morning. All right. Part of that late arriving crowd, huh? You yeah. Coming in with the college kids, Gary? Yeah. Yep. yep. First pitch, 9 o'clock, 8.58. How we doing? I pulled the Ed Rowey special coming in right before game time. Yeah. You didn't even bring your own headset, though. I was disappointed. <laughs> Nice job there by Bruchel following that one back. Staying alive. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Stadola now down at second. Scoreboard's always relative, sometimes right, a lot of times wrong. All right. Same. <laughs> <laughs> but more right lately than I have James producing. It's uh, He's pretty much on top of it. That's easy when you got one person oh, doing way, one it's thing. It's really know? easy. Yep. Yep. That's what I always say. I mean, <laughs> you turn on these TV broadcasts and there's... There's an army of people behind these. There's announcers. one person for balls and strikes, another person for outs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, another person for the people going around the bases. It's like 40 people producing, one person play-by-play, -play, one person... But see, you're so of. good at this. That yeah. You just need, we just need you, that's all. Yeah, right. <laughs> you do such a great job, nobody else is even needed. Two two offering that one off the front of the plates. Gonna get by. So Sedola down the third. Spindler unable to keep that in front of her. I bounced about a foot in front of the plate. Good fastball. She was, a, she was ahead of her. You know, Gary, I look at this lineup uh, for Valders. Just one 2024 on the roster, Claire Zipperer. Uh, so, a lot, a lot of, of young talent. A lot of young talent, future ahead. Yeah. Oh, just a couple of 2025s. Everybody else. They're really young. Sophomores and freshmen. Boy, that was a hard earned walk. I'll tell you what, she worked for that. Is that Bruchard? Yep. Yeah, she worked hard for that walk. Good at bat. And now she gets lifted for a courtesy runner. Looks like it's going to be Alicia Kinjerski. So Caitlin and Dare will bat in the five spot here this afternoon for the Michigan Indians. Kinjerski going to be cut down, trying to steal second. However, Stadola comes home, picking up the second run of the game for the Michigan Indians. Well, for you Michigan folks uh, watching or, or listening, uh, wherever you may be, we are in the early process of doing some, uh, looking for some sponsorships for us to be able to bring the state tournament, the softball state tournament to you. Uh, by audio, the same way we did last year. Last year I picked up the tab. This year I'm going to need some sponsors to do it. But it's, it's all 19 games, and uh, hopefully Michigan will be part of that. If you're interested in sponsoring us uh, as part of our state softball package, info at productionsw7.com. That's info at productionsw7.com. Love to talk to you about a great sponsorship. We had so much fun last year at State. I, I really look forward to doing it again this year. Well, the fun of it is picking against the kids just yeah. out of, you know, pure, you know, not that we don't believe in them. But, it, uh, you, you know, you, you, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. So you pick pick against one, and then the kids and coaches got involved in social media. And oh, I got to tell you something, it, too. It snowballed, like, completely out of control. I got to tell, ha tell you what happened with Mayville. I haven't told you this yet. We might have to. Uh, we got – Two outs here. We might have to yeah, table we'll hold to the next inning. Table to the second inning. 
Swing and a miss there from Kalen Adair down on strikes. That will retire the side. But after one complete, we head to the top of the second. Michigan two. Now well, there's nothing coming to bat here on W7. My younger brother got me into cycling about 15 years ago. After I was injured and the cartilage started to wear out in my left hip, is that I just became sedentary. Orthopedic Associate took such good care of me. I went in one day, came home the next day. Nine months after my hip surgery, I did a 150 mile bike ride. It's just been a great experience. I'm back doing everything that I was doing and more. Back here at top of the second. Tonight's game, afternoon's game, powered by Jolly Good Soda. Visit jollygoodsoda.com and enter your zip code to find the nearest retailer near you. We also encourage you to visit their website to find some tremendous vintage style apparel. Make sure you use the promo code for the girls. Get 17% off all merchandise. Jolly Good Soda puts the pop in Wisconsin. Taking things off here in the top of the second will be Anna Olson. Vikings trying to get one, if not all, of those runs back they gave up in the bottom of the second. So let's go back to uh, what happened in Mayville uh, the other night when you had the random light game. So I was in Mayville. We did the random light game. It was We had a great time. They had a press box. We were able to be up there. It was really nice. And uh, after the game, uh, the coach came over and said, you know, he was they, that the girls were upset. We did our state preview show, and uh, we talked about uh, um, Broadhead. Is that who they played? Did they play Broadhead? Mayville. Well, Broadhead played Michigan in the finals. No, uh, no, in the semifinal game. Yeah, but who who did who did Mayville play in the finals? Did they play Broadhead? Might have. Because were they both Cardinals? Yeah. Anyway, anyway, regardless, the Mayville kids were upset about something you said in the state tournament, in the state tournament preview show. So, number one, you upset Broadhead by, by telling them that they were going to lose, so you made them mad, but you also made the Mayville kids mad. Do you know what you said that made the Mayville kids mad? And you'll never guess this. What upset them was you called them the other Cardinals. The other Cardinals. So you said the Broadhead Cardinals and then the, the other Cardinals, Mayville. They didn't like being called the other Cardinals. Well, wow, there's two Cardinals in the Still, thing. they didn't, you know, make someone else the other Cardinals. They did not like it. They were, they all still remembered it. The coach remembered it. It was like, it was like a sore spot. <laughs> I was worried if I was going to get out of there okay. <laughs> well, 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 Mayville is the Cardinals, <laughs> I guess. They were fired up. There you go. Eh, it's all in good fun, though. You know, that's that's good, though. I like Connor it. can't win us. I he like got he, no, they got yelled win. at him for that. And then when Broadhead uh, won in the state finals, afterwards we did our player of the game interviews, and the uh, the kids from Broadhead came and doused him with their water bottles during the interview. Eh, yeah. I'm just gonna sit out all the picks this year. But you know what? Here's the thing. I didn't feel bad for you. It was about 87 degrees. No, I would have done that like and, after and every game. And they doused you. I mean, you that was like a cool, refreshing, you know, bath. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been different if it was like last week. Right, right. <laughs> but by the time we went from, you know, the, those familiar with Goodman Diamond, you do all the interviews out behind right field. And then by the time we walked back up to the press box You were area, probably dry again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it was so hot and dried oh, off. Oh, it, it was so hot. It was great. It's always hot that week. Of course, it's the middle of June, so yeah. you're going you're gonna to have that. Sedola pounding the strike zone gets Spindler down on strikes. So two up, two down here for the Valders Vikings, not the other Vikings, <laughs> the Valders Vikings. Getting quite a long list of people upset with you, Connor. I know. They've been a trail in your wake here. Yes, I, had to, I had to go to bat for you with Mayville. <laughs> they said they were glad I came. If that other guy would have came, they, he'd have got an earful. Oh yeah, like I like we, you and I both always say, prove us right, prove us wrong. We're good either way. One hundred percent. 
I would almost rather be proved wrong on those. Yeah, that's you know, fun. Those predictions, that's you fun. know. Uh, and the kids were laughing about it. They just they thought it was funny. Yep. The Bayville kids, they they laughed about it. Big swing and a miss there from Kotarabic. She's behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. But it's quite a big deep pit in that batter's box. Yeah, there's been no maintenance between games. Swing and miss. Kotarabic down on strikes. One, two, and three. Go. The, Vi the Vikings here in the seconds. We'll head to the bottom of the second. Which got leads 2-0. We'll look to add to it when we come back. Sportsmanship doesn't stop when the game ends. It's part of the community you live in. Respect, character, dignity, your community, your team. We're a proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Insurance Sportsmanship Award and have been since it began. It recognizes that sportsmanship matters in your community. Visit ruralmutual.com slash WIAA and see how our team and your community can work together to be true champions. Back here in Michigan's Indians lead 2-0 the home half of the second coming up. Hey, all Wisconsin Tree Services, there is no job too big or too small for all Wisconsin Tree Services. We offer year-round services for your small, for your home or commercial properties, including tree removal, stump grinding, tree trimming, forestry clearing, 24-7 emergency storm cleanup, and much, much more. Give them a visit at allwitreeservices.com or give them a call, 920-661-7102. Carson Krause leading things off here for the Indians in their home half of the second, heading to count, two balls and no strikes. The sophomore, Megan Hockheimer in the circle. Right there, bottom of the knees, two and one. That one upstairs, three and one. If you're looking for our schedule of games, productions w7.com backslash live. Could be our full schedule for softball. Kraus way out ahead of that one. Three and two. Connor will be at Notre Dame Tuesday and Thursday next week. Tuesday against De Pere, Thursday against Pulaski. Oh, long trip. <laughs> right. Upstairs, ball four, so Carson Krause draws the leadoff walk here in the second. I'll bring up the left fielder now, Kieran Sanford. I'll be at St. Mary Springs Monday at Verona on Tuesday. Thursday at North Fondy, Friday Random Lake, and Saturday Watertown. I don't have anything. Busy week. I don't have anything on Saturday. That must be nice. Come on down. Was it supposed to be 48 degrees? Should be fantastic. Upstairs, 101. Watertown, Sun Prairie West, Chippewa Falls, and Kettle Moraine in that quad. We'll have all the Watertown games, so we'll get to see them play each of the th three other teams. Throw behind, Kraus taking off for second. Spindler looking down with a look of bewilderment, like well, she's supposed to go back to first, <laughs> but she went to 
second. Can't win, oh, I tell well. you. O2 offering low and inside. And one, two, and that'll draw the count even at two. Oh no, you're you're you got something Saturday. You're at the Kimberly tournament Saturday. No, oh, all right. Being Kimberly. Couple games down there, huh? Yeah. Kimberly. Is that the one Lakeland's at, I believe? Yes. You get to see Sailor Timmerman and Lakeland, the Thunderbirds. I don't know why I was a surprise to see her at the uh, Wausau East. She just uh, looked so we were out there. Place. Yeah, I, was I, like, just, I couldn't. I couldn't place her. Yeah, I didn't expect to see her at a basketball game, and obviously not in a softball uniform. I was like, "Wait, who are you?" It was like last night. I came running by, and somebody yelled, "Hey, Connor, how's it going?" And I look. I'm like, "Oh, hey." And I was trying to get back for the post game interview. They're like. You recognize him? I'm like, who it is Avery Borowski? Oh, I hate at it. The, I hate it when they ask at if the you Notre, recognize at me. The no, at a Notre Dame versus Sheboygan South softball game. Weird. Like, of all places, I would not expect to see you. That would be one of them. That's why it's hard. <laughs> like, when we do all star games and the kids aren't in their uniforms yeah. for their team, and uh, you know the the kids, you know, and I and I love this about them, and I love that we have this. They they automatically assume that we know all of them, you know, just on site. Uh, which is, is far from the case. It's great. But I'm, I'm glad they, they're that comfortable that they think that we do. Carrico, big swing and a miss over the top of that one. Even the count, one ball, one strike, and one out here in the bottom of the second. And when I don't know, I start asking questions to get hints. Swings underneath that one as Hockheimer climbs the ladder. Climbs the ladder again. Carrico goes up there with her for the second out of the inning. So that'll bring up Sidney Brossard. Sid not playing in the first game, getting uh, some action here in this one. Love the uh, chin strap across the brim of the helmet from yeah. Sid. <laughs> Why not put it up there, right? <coughs> per the manufacturer's recommendations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Swing and a miss there from Sidney Rossard. That one popped up in uh, the center of the infield. Ranging over is Hernandez to make the grab. And that will retire the side after two complete. Indians two. The Vikings, nothing but coming to bat here on W7. Pain's a very lonely place. I came to Orthopedic Associates because I had a ruptured disc in my neck. I needed to get it fixed as soon as I could. Life immediately following the procedure is better. I have three young boys, I coach their sports, I play their sports with them. So just the joying life came back, the pain was gone, the entire standard of life became better. Top of three, leading things off 
for the Vikings. Number 25, Abby Schultz. Another, another member of this sophomore class that is uh, large and very, very competitive. Got to see a lot of them play in basketball. We made the trip down there earlier this year. A lot of members of that class out for sports, making an impact at Valders. One, two count here to Schultz. Swing and a miss there. So Schultz down on strikes. At SBS Plumbing, to save you money, we offer several pricing options. Start with a free estimate once you decide on the job. You can, if you wish, choose menu pricing. With menu pricing, you know the exact guaranteed price for your repair or installation before we arrive. Visit sbs-plumbing.com or call 920-230-5933. Let them know W7 sent you. Swing and a miss there from Madison Burgle. Burgle, the number nine batter, playing out in center field this afternoon. Pounds that one into the dirt in front of home plate. Casey Bruchold over to pick it up right in your living room. Corsetal way ahead in the count. No balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. She blows it by Burgle there. So back to back strikeouts there for Stadola. Has two outs on the board. And And correction, Burgle not batting ninth in the lineup. She was batting eighth. This is the nine batter. The left fielder, Brooke O'Connor. O'Connor in the circle against Chilton. Now out in left field for this Second game, the afternoon matinee of this triangular. Michigan against Valders. Michigan leading 2 0 here in the early going. Connor swings over the top of that one. Brooke, just a freshman. Lone freshman on the squad. Swing and a miss. Stadola gets all three via the strikeout. And after two and a half complete. Well, Vikings nothing. Mishakot two. They'll look to get the bats going here in the bottom half of the third on W7. W7's got it right. Covering girls high school sports all the time. 100% free, 100% live, W7 for the girls. Hummingbird Apparel, why Hummingbird? Unlike the large companies like BSN who make you sign contracts and are a two to three month turnaround, we have no contracts and are typically a two week turnaround on all orders. Visit hummingbirdapparel.org to learn more. Hummingbirdapparel.org. Local to the Lakeshore community here, just down the way in Random Lake. Well, they'll deliver if you'd like. 
Give them a visit, hummingbirdapparel.org. Leading things off here for the Indians in their home half of the third is going to be center fielder Cora Nelson. Swing and a miss underneath that one. Two balls, one strike. Goes the count on the Image 360 New Berlin, Wisconsin scoreboard. That one popped up. Going to make its way next door into the baseball diamond. That one low, three and two. So the three, two offering. That one gonna skip off the front of the plate. Ball four, Nelson aboard again this afternoon. A couple walks for her. So no official plate appearance, but two walks. She would come around and score back in the first. See if she can't do that again here for the Indians. Now. Now Hockamer going to Work her way through the heart of the Michigan lineup. Two, three, four. Callahan, Stadola, Bouchaud. And then waiting behind that, Adair, Krause, and Sanford. No easy out to be had in the lineup here this afternoon against the Indians. Line shot back up the middle. Nelson around second, she will make third. Big turn at first for Callahan. Seeing where that throw went, she'll retreat back to first. So runners at the corner. Nobody out. For the pitcher, Cora Stadola. Out upstairs, 1 0. Nothing going on the base pass here early in this at bat. Callahan staying put at first. That one in there for a strike. A little bit of a delayed steal there for Callahan. No throw as it went back to the circle. So Callahan now over at second. Runners at second and third, and Callahan and Nelson, respectively. The pitcher, Cora Stadola, in the box, looking to help her own cause. One ball, one strike, count to her. That offering inside, jam job foul. We'll move the count to one ball, two strikes. So, Hockamer, a chance here to get that big first out of the inning via the strikeout. And she does, gets her counterpart down on strikes, goes to Dola. Quick throw behind down to third, not catching Nelson off guard, diving back in there safely. Gets to the backstop, Corey Nelson unable to beat the throw in the tag. Nice job there behind the plate by Spindler, jumping right on it. Hockamer coming in, applying the tag, and Cora Nelson cut down at the plate in what looked to be a promising inning for the Indians, now on the verge of getting nothing out of it. 
Callahan over to the third though. As she stands there now with two outs. Casey Bruchot in the box. Heading to count one ball, no strike. But Hockermer now just one pitch away from getting out of the big, big no out jam. Now quickly the tides have turned here in this bottom of the second inning. Bottom of the third, I should say. Right back to Hockamer. She'll feel that flip the first, and that will retire the side. So the Indians threaten, run themselves out of a couple runs potentially. And now we'll head to the fourth. Indians two, Vikings nothing. You're watching. High School Girls Softball, presented by Jolly Good Soda, Fix TV, Bay Area Granite Marble, all Wisconsin Tree Services, SBS Plumbing, Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin, and 360U Softball Baseball Training. We'll step away, we'll come back. More High School Girls, Softball, only on W7. W7's got it right. Covering girls' high school sports all the time. 100% free, 100% live. W7 for the girls. Saturday afternoon softball here in the Cots. Nothing more to say, but I like it. I love it. And we want some more of it here on W7 Live. Indians threatening their home half of the third. Kind of run themselves out of a potential big inning with the heart of the order up. See if that sparks a little rally on the Vikings of Alders. Waiting things off for the Vikings will be their shortstop, Ariana Hernandez. That should be the top of the lineup for the Vikings. So after a great defensive inning, chance here to Keep the momentum going on the offensive side of the ball. The one offering off the front of the plate, one and one. Great stop there by Bruchot. Coming into this inning, Stadola faced nine batters, eight strikeouts. Through three innings of work. Alrighty, there we go, back live. I win the prize, first one of the season to get the iPad to overheat or I'll sit in the sun. So, had to wait for that baby to cool down. And now we're back, ready to go. Again, if you're coming back, joining us, didn't miss much. A lot of strikeouts, couple ground outs, that's about it. Nobody really got on, nobody really even threatened the score. Still two nothing, now into the top of the fifth. And we are Sedola still in the circle. Spindler in the box here for the Vikings of Alders. 
3-0 the count to her. She'll take inside corner. Strike number two. Thanks for coming back to us. We appreciate it. First iPad overheat of the season if you had April 13th on your calendars. You win the jolly good prize pack. Usually it doesn't happen until mid to late May. So we get those iPads to overheat uh, being in the, in the sun and the temperature already here. But uh, three games today, beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. That'll do it. Get things back up. 2-0 on the image, 360 New Berlin, Wisconsin scoreboard. So Spindler popped off the Callahan, and that'll bring up number 20, the second baseman, McKenna Kotorovic. That one inside corner. Side again, that will retire the side. Kotorovic down on strikes. And after four and a half complete, Michigan's two, Valder's nothing. New Austin High School Girls Softball, presented by Image 360U, New, er, presented by Image 360 New Berlin, as well as 360U baseball and softball training, Bay Area Granite and Marble, All Wisconsin Tree Services, SPS Plumbing, Hummingbird Apparel, and of course, we are powered by Jolly Good Soda. And you can catch all the action 100% free, 100% live, here on our YouTube page, Productions W7, or download the Fix TV app both on Apple and Android, or get it right on Fire TV, Roku, and Apple TV. Find more and more ways to bring you high school girls athletics as the popularity and demand for female sports continues to grow as witnessed by this weekend's, past weekend's Final Four, out doing the men's. Back here, Diamond Side in the cot. Leading things off will be Bailey Carrico. Out at second base this afternoon for the second contest. Looking to get things going. Oh, for one today with a strikeout is Bailey. That one way upstairs. Out of the hands of Megan Hockamer. That one popped in the center field. Coming on and making the grab out there is Madison Burgle. So with nobody on and one out, that will bring up the right fielder, Sidney Brossard. Stairs, so Brossard will start ahead in the count one and zero. That one popped up on the infield. 
right along the third baseline, right at third base, settle under it. Making the catch is Abby Schultz. So back to the top of the order. For Cora Nelson. Two outs, nobody aboard. For the center fielder. First pitch swinging, down the line, knifing, fair territory. That one now gonna bounce across the chalk line and into the corner. Corin Nelson aboard with a two out single or double. That double brought to you by Bay Area Greater Marble. With the area's largest selection of natural stone and quartz, coupled with skillfully trained and experienced craftsmanship, Bay Area Granite Marble is able to exceed your expectations. Visit BAGM.com to learn more. It's now a two out, one aboard. A senior Caitlin Callahan. And here the Valders coaching staff say deeper, deeper, deeper. That's a good option when Caitlin Callahan is up. You'll take the single. From Caitlin Callahan, not too many times is she going to keep it in front of you. That's mainly going to be a miss hit. If she gets, if she gets a good swing on it. More than likely, it's going to the fence. Big swing and a miss there from Callahan. Now behind the count, one ball, two strikes. Here's the one two offering from Hokemer. Hard hit down the third base line. Stepping in front of it. Unable to make the throw over there was Schultz. One run comes in and scores. That'll make it 3 0. Indians have been quiet really since that bottom half of the first inning. They scored two in the first. And it's been quiet both ways for the Indians and Vikings up until this point. Now the pitcher, Cora Stadola. Caitlin Callahan, another delayed steal out there. A little belly flop slide out there at second. Pitch was called a strike, so no balls, one strike here to Cora Stadola, who fouls that one off. Now in the hole, no balls, two strikes. Looking for a little bit of insurance run out there with the good speed of Caitlin Callahan at second, and the outfielder is playing with heels on the outfield fence out there at anything in the grass should score Callahan. Stadola gonna pop that one foul, and we'll reset, do it again. The 0-2 offer, that one gonna skip in there off the front of the plate. Callahan going to third. She's gonna slide, not even slide, stand up safely. So now one pass ball away is Callahan for making this a four nothing ball game. One two count here to the senior, Cora Stadola. Pitching a marvelous game in the circle as well. One two offering blown by Cora Stadola. And that will retire the side. So the Indians scratch across one run, make a three nothing. And after five completes, we head to the top of the sixth. Indians three, Valder's nothing. Coming to bat here on W7.
Founded in 2016, the mission of 360 U is to provide superior softball and baseball training to our athletes to empower them to become the most confident, complete versions of themselves. At 360U, we are proud to be a family-owned business that is passionate about offering the best softball and baseball training for our athletes. Our training environment is welcoming and family-oriented, providing a safe and nurturing space for players to develop their skills. Visit the36u.com to learn more. That's the36u.com. So leading things off here in the top of the sixth will be the third baseman, Abby Schultz. And Schultz down on strikes. So that'll bring up number 19, Madison Burgle. Burgle ranging out in center field this afternoon for the afternoon matinee. The 0-2 offering, swing and a miss. And the 0-1 offering, I should say, 0-2 now. Swing and a miss there. Down on strikes goes Burgle. So that'll bring up the left fielder. And lone freshman on the roster, Brooke O'Connor. Climbing a ladder, Stadola there. O'Connor going up the ladder with her, one and one. That one skied high, coming over to making the grab is Kaylin Adair. And that will be the third out of the inning. So the Vikings go quietly, one, two, three. I'm shouting all about love. And we'll head to the bottom of the six. Well, they cheated you like a dog. Yeah. Here on W7. W7's got it right. Covering girls' high school sports all the time. 100% free, 100% live, W7 for the girls. Bottom of the sixth, Casey Bruchot leading things off here for the Michigan Indians. That one upstairs, 1-0. One oh. That one foul over off the fence, 1-1. One and one.
Swing and a miss. Big cut there. Bruce Shaw, the one and two. Megan Hockamer. Surrender just three runs so far. Two of them earned. Four walks, eight strikeouts. 100 pitches, 59 of them in there for strikes. Facing her 22nd batter here in the top of the six. So doing a nice job keeping this high-powered Michigan offense kind of at bay for the most part. Nothing really to hang her hat on. Doing a good job hitting spots, moving it around. As Bruchel behind the count, one ball, two strikes right now. She's got her sign, she'll rock, fire, swing and a miss. Nine strikeouts now on the afternoon for Megan Hockamer. That'll bring up Kaylin Adair, 0 for 2 today, two strikeouts, two of the nine. And as I look at the live scoring, everybody in this Michigan lineup actually with at least one strikeout, with the exception of Sidney Brossard and Cora Nelson. Cora Nelson, the one batter, Sidney Brossard, the nine batter. Everybody between those two bookends have been victim to the K from Megan Hockamer. Hockamer buries that one in the dirt, one and one. The one, one offering. Ground ball one, Hopper right back. To the circle, Hockamer fields her circle. Flips over to first. Two up, two down. So that'll bring up the third baseman, Carson Kraus. Now went upstairs, 1-0. Oh. Waits back on that change up, but still way out ahead of it. That'll even count. One ball, one strike here to Carson Krause. Sanford awaits on deck, Carrico behind her, and then Sydney Brosser. All those looking to, to get at least one more at bat here this afternoon. If they don't, it means Michigan will probably hang on to this 3 0 lead in the top of the seventh. One, two offering from Hockamer. Inside, swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes Carson Kraus. And after six completes, Michigan three, Valders, nothing. Final chance Good for the Vikings when we come back. See how far they can extend this. Right between my sound machine. Well, cloud of sound, I drift in the night. Sportsmanship doesn't stop when the game ends. It's part of the community you live in. Respect, character, dignity. 
your community, your team. We're a proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Insurance Sportsmanship Award and have been since it began. It recognizes that sportsmanship matters in your community. Visit ruralmutual.com slash WIAA and see how our team and your community can work together to be true champions. True champions. Top of the seventh, we move. Last chance for Valders. They'll start it off with a single. That's what you need. Need to string a couple of those together. So Hernandez gets the party started here in the seventh inning with the leadoff single. Cleared away for the pitcher, Megan Hokemer. Throw behind. Back safely is Hernandez at first. Strike on the pitch. So Hokemer in the hole on one. Climbs the ladder there. Going to slap that one foul, though. One and one. String together a couple singles, a couple big, big bombs, and you never know what you get. This one skied high, left side of the infield. Adair will set it all under it out there at short for the first out of the inning. So that'll bring up the first baseman, Claire Zipperer. She'll take strike inside corner, nothing going. Snap throw by Rochelle down the first. Callahan slap tag just a little bit late. Hernandez diving back in there. That one's going to be into the gap. Nelson over to cut it off. Hernandez around second, sliding in the third safely. So now we got a little something brewing here on the Viking ship side. Still a lot of work to be done, but it looks more manageable here now with one out and two aboard, both in scoring position. Hernandez at third and Zipper at second. And Olsen in the box looking to drive them in. 0 for 2 today, two strikeouts. Looking to turn that around. Snap throw down the third. Back in plenty of time is Hernandez. Olsen goes fishing down low, slaps a foul. So now Olsen behind the count, no balls, two strikes. Cora Sedola in the circle fully in the catbird seat here, how she wants to attack these next few pitches. Outside corner, nothing going. One and two. One out on the board for the Vikings. Swing and a miss there from Olsen. Now the Vikings down to their final out. And it will be in the form of their catcher, Addison Spindler. So 
She'll dig in the right-handed batter's box, wait back there on the changeup. Foul that one off 0-1. Head coach Don Schimmick nearing win number 201 now. Picked up 200 earlier today, and now just one strikeout away from picking up 201 on her second stint here at Michigan. 201 wins looming in basically nine year time frame, or 10 year time frame. Started in 2013 in her second stint here, now in the 2024 season. But of course, 2020 was completely canceled. And you do the math, 200 wins over 10 years. That's 20 a year. That one will skip in there. Two and two. So deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two Vikings aboard at second and third. Spitting the winner in the box, looking to keep the train moving. Upstairs, three and two, the count runs full. Full count, Spindler will dig back into the batter's box. The payoff pitch coming from Sedola. Right there, three down on strikes goes Spindler. And your final from Michigan in the afternoon matinee. Michigan beats the Vikings. 3-0 here on W7. Stick around for our Charlie Good Soda Player of the Game interview. The member of the Michigan Lady Indians coming up next here on W7.
Alrighty, we are back with our jolly good soda player of the game, kind of games, combination thereof. We'll talk a little bit about the season, but it is Caitlin Callahan from Michigan Softball. Caitlin, talk to me a little bit about the game and, uh, you know, the first one against Chilton as well. Yeah, the first one, we were just super excited to get Coach to mix 200 wins. And then coming out in this game, we wanted to make sure we got 201. So we had two really strong pitching performances and just backed that up with some great hitting. Yeah, I mean, talk about the, you know, the pitching performance a little bit. Everybody was a little shocked, you know, kind of said, you know, you're like, are you sure you don't want Cora? It's just, <laughs> yeah, she pitched a heck of a game, I think. What, back it up with 15 strikeouts? Uh, and then in the first game, uh, um, <laughs> Karen had uh, 17 herself. So 32 strikeouts yeah. on the day uh, between the two pitching staffs. But uh, or the two on the pitching staff, but you know, we've interviewed Cora over over the years a little bit, you know, and uh, and you know Caitlin being, I mean, she's also a senior, but you're a senior as well, you know. Uh, just want to talk a little bit about you know life and 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 softball and all that kind of fun stuff. And I also got to give you a shout out from um, from uh, Coach Scott Hermes from up at Notre Dame. He yeah. said he's part of uh, part of the softball crew that he's yeah. coached a couple different places, so. Uh, shout out from uh, Scott as well, but talk to me a little bit about this team. You see, you know, you guys really wanted to get 200 wins for Coach Shemek and stuff like that. But what what's making this group kind of unique this year, and and what does it mean it being your senior year? Mm -hmm. This is kind of the group that we all grew up playing together, and so I've been playing with them since I moved here to Michigan in eighth grade. So it's just really special to finish off my career with such a strong and experienced group. Yeah, absolutely. And what's the difference? I mean. One person graduated from last year, but what makes this team kind of different this year than, than last year's? This team just has a ton of firepower and a ton of passion for the game. And now going to state last year, we returned our entire batting order. It's um, really great to have that experience and just knowledge of the game. Absolutely. It's kind of like, yeah, I've been there, done that before. Everything's just like another just another check the mm -hmm. box, and we're going, you know, maybe hopefully you guys get back down there and uh, – do a little more damage yeah. than, than last year. Um, I think maybe a lot of people maybe thought maybe I don't say I don't say unexpected, yeah. but it's like, well, they're back again. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, yeah. If you know anything about Michigan <laughs> softball in the program, like, yeah, you just kind of pencil them in. It's just a matter of of uh, when they when they actually make it official. But uh, headed off to Northern Iowa next next year, uh, um, so that'll be exciting. As a senior, you know, you kind of treat you know, you didn't grow up here, but you know eventually uh, moved here transferred in but uh, you made a huge impact on on the program and the community what's one thing you message you know you'd like to leave for you know you hope man hey I remember watching Caitlin Callahan play or you know you hope the little ones take away from from your time here in, in Michigan just the passion and all the work that is going unnoticed but that helps us to succeed on the field because there's so many things that people don't see that just create this winning culture you have at Michigan. Well, you talk about the winning culture. I mean, you guys are in the gym early in the morning, and there's – I mean, I remember seeing a post like, uh, we got too many little kids <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> like, high school season starts yeah. next week. Like, too many little kids <laughs> in the gym. You guys need to stop coming and trying yeah. to be really good. Like, uh, you guys need to get your own open gyms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Caitlin's like, I'm not getting my swings <laughs> in. Sorry, <laughs> but six of you, y'all going to have to wait. <laughs> but – uh Talk to me about, I know one thing that Coach Simic does that uh, I love is you guys have like a little buddy program. Mm -hmm. how, how neat is that? And then you kind of get to stay connected with them throughout the year. It's so awesome. It just makes them fall in love with the game of softball, creating relationships and seeing how great that they can become in the future. And it just really inspires them. And it gives us something to play for too. Absolutely. Well, hey, Caitlin Callahan, our jolly good soda player of the game. And there they turn the scoreboard off. I've got it here <laughs> somewhere, though. Hey, 3 nothing win. Uh, there it is, right? 3 nothing. Yeah, 3 nothing win over <laughs> Valders. There we go. Glad I still got it there. But uh, Gary had to take off, but we both wanted to say good luck, best of luck uh, moving on uh, in, and going to northern Iowa. We'll, we'll be following you for sure. Thank you. You know, uh, take, some, take some nice Wisconsin weather back there to <laughs> Iowa yep. with you, you know. Um, so good luck uh, the rest of the year. Maybe we'll uh, rendezvous down in uh, – down at Goodman Diamond uh, again. That would be that will be fun uh, and a great way to cap off that senior year in your time here at Michigan. For Caitlin Callahan, Gary Wepperman, and everybody else on the W7 staff, it's been a great day here in the Cots. We will catch you next week. Plenty of games all week.
Good luck to Caitlin and the rest of her Michigan teammates as they head through the rest of the season. One final thing. Everything we do, we do for the girls.